Hello everybody, my name is John Siebers with Wool Car Hyundai North and welcome to another episode of Roadside Reviews where today we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2021 Hyundai Kona and also 2021 Hyundai Tucson. Now, the Hyundai Kona was first introduced in 2017 into the subcompact market to be able to compete with such vehicles as the Kia Selvos and also the Jeep Compass. It has five different trim levels, your SE, SEL, SEL Plus, Limited, and then the Ultimate, the Bad Boy, which is the one we're going to be taking a look at today. So why don't we go ahead and dive in, and the very first place you're going to notice is the aggressive styling in the front of the car. Very strong body lines. The characteristic bow tie shaped front grille with the honeycomb mesh add a very, very sporty look to it. Also having the chrome surround with the satin finish, give it a beautiful two-tone pop that you don't see in a lot of traditional SUVs. Just like with every other Hyundai SUV, a large chrome emblem right into the front, making it unmistakable. And also with the SUV line too, having your split level headlights. Now on this Ultimate, we do have LED turn signals and LED projector lenses, giving you a good aggressive look but also maximum visibility down the road. So now let's go ahead and take a look at where all the magic happens. Now this Hyundai Kona comes with a 1.6 liter inline four cylinder engine that is also turbocharged. This engine creates 174 horsepower and 195 foot pounds of torque. It is no slouch whatsoever. Having a smaller displacement motor helps with fuel efficiency but also having the turbocharger really adds that sporty feel with acceleration. Now having 174 horsepower, that's what gets you up and going and maintaining the speed of the freeway. Having a lot of torque is what gets you going up onto the road. So think about acceleration, torque, horsepower, speed on the freeway. Now, I'm not the most engine savvy person, but if you take a look at everything underneath the hood, from your engine oil dipstick, coolant levels, brake fluid, if you're going on a quick road trip, just going ahead and doing some basic maintenance right off the bat you can be able to see exactly where everything's laying out and that was designed by Hyundai to make this a very user-friendly vehicle not only to be able to own but then also maintain now coming over here the wheels and tires keeping with the sporty look we do have 18 inch two-tone machine alloy wheels the great part about this is you still have that nice shiny finish on the outside, but then also the gray inlay, which is gonna match the characteristics of this vehicle and the two-tone satin finish that's gonna run the whole length of the car. Having the Goodyear tires on it are also gonna be great for on-road driving for longer road trips, but also give you a little bit more aggressive handling, but still enough traction so if you're going off the beaded path to go mountain biking or down by the river to go kayaking, you have the ability and it's also the traction to be able to do so. Coming down here too, you can be able to see that that two-tone satin finish runs the full length of the uh, vehicle. And then also, the same satin finish too, down on the bottom. That's really gonna be able to make it pop in something you'd see in a much higher end SUV and not having the price tag to go along with it. Now being a utility vehicle, you can still do things with it, meaning you have these crossbars, which can be installed later on. So if you have a kayak, mountain bike, or just need extra storage by putting the crossbars across the way, you can be able to haul many different items, but also keeping with the utility feel of this vehicle. Coming to the back, a lot of the same characteristics and cues that you saw in the front continue to the rear. LED tail lights, two-tone satin finishes. You do also have the chrome Hyundai badge and also a chrome license plate finisher. The Kona and then also the 1.6T letting everybody know that you do have the bad, bad motor, right? Getting into the rear, even for a subcompact SUV, tons of storage, tons of storage. If you want to take your four-legged friends with you, you can be able to put a 42-inch dog crate, or if you just want to hang loose, what is it, two, three American Bulldogs, three Labradoodles, anything that you want, even if it's for a camping trip, you can be able to put backpacks, tents, ice chests, and still have room to be able to spare, or if it's just gonna be a grocery getter to HEB. So you don't have to worry about losing that space when you're going to a smaller SUV. Now that you can truly see the amount of space that you have back here, you have a flat surface, so you don't have to worry about anything rolling around. Underneath, more storage, so if you have a first aid kit, cargo nets, road flares, spare tools, 
anything that you want that you don't want to be rolling around inside the compartment you have storage for and directly underneath that spare tire and all your jack equipment now a good thing to be able to point out is every new Hyundai that you buy from Wolcar Hyundai is going to come with lifetime roadside assistance that's 24 7 365 so if you get a flat tire lock your keys in the car run out of gas or the vehicle breaks down all you have to do is call the 1-800 number tell them where you're at and they'll get you towed to the nearest Hyundai dealership or AC certified mechanic Chances of you ever having to use it are slim to nil, but at least now you know where everything's at. Now let's talk about more storage space and cargo space. You can see that you have quite an abundance of space already in the back of the vehicle. But by simply pulling these levers at the top, you have a 60-40 split folding seat. What is 60-40? Basically, you can be able to fold down one side that holds two seats or one side that holds one seat. So you can still have adaptability. If there's four people going, but you still need a little bit more room, you can be able to fold down one side or both. So if you're a weekend warrior, you want to do some potted plants and some edging, and you need to be able to pile some terracotta pots, you have the amount of space that you'd get in like, let's say a small pickup truck inside a small compact SUV. So very utilitarian holding up with the values of what you'd get in a crossover SUV. Now that we're over here at the driver's door, we're going to talk about the keyless entry with also the proximity entry that you get with the intelligent key on the ultimate of the Kona. Now with this key, you have your traditional lock, unlock, and panic buttons that go along with that. So you can simply be able to pull it out of your pocket, unlock one door or all the doors, and also be able to lock and arm the vehicle, and then also your panic to be able to help find your vehicle out in the parking lot. Now the way that the proximity works, as long as the key is inside your pocket, backpack, purse, gym bag, whatever it may be, and when you're within about four feet of the door, simply hit the button once. Now your driver door is unlocked. Now this is selective as well, so if you're coming in through the driver's side and you hit the button only once, it only unlocks the driver's door. Now that keeps anybody unwanted from entering into the other side. Hit the button one more time, you hear it beep once, and now the alarm is set, all the doors are locked. If you hit the button twice in a row, now all the doors are open. So if you're taking the gang out for happy hour, you lose a bet on the election, and then you owe somebody some lunch, whatever it may be, everybody can be able to pile into the car. Now, one of the very first things that you're gonna notice when you look into the Hyundai Kona is gonna be the driver's door and the amount of storage space that you have down there on the bottom. And it also has an integrated thermos holder too. So if you have a Yeti cup, a larger bottle of water, or a fountain drink, you don't want that sitting in the center console, you have space for it down here. You do also have a padded armrest, which then leads to all your power windows, door locks, window locks, to be able to keep any of the kids from rolling down the windows, and also mirror controls. They're also strategically located, so if your hand or arm is on the armrest, it's just right at fingertips reach. Very easy to be able to get to. Now, the driver's seat is going to be an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way adjustable lumbar support, making sure you get the best and most comfortable seating surface as possible, whether you're just running around town or you're going on longer road trips out to the country or let's say you're going to Enchanted Rock, hour and a half, two hours away. You're going to get much less driver fatigue from driving it than you would be if you're just sitting in a four-way manual seat. A lot more customization that goes along with it. Now, if you notice right here underneath your AC vent, all your safety controls and heads-up display controls are located in one spot. Having them all together means you don't have to go through menus on the screen or different parts of the car to be able to access them. Everything from your blind spot monitoring, your heads-up display, lane keep, and also traction control all in one spot. Very, very easy to be able to get to. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice is how much space there is up here for the driver and front passenger just enormous amount but also still maintains that sporty feel almost like a cockpit and you know a, a high-end luxury car sports car everything from the soft touch thick leather steering wheel down to the ergonomics of how everything's laid out very user friendly now one of the first things we're going to touch on is now going to be the push button start since we have the proximity and smart key all you have to do is place your foot on the brake have the key inside the car press the button once vehicle starts up. Now it'll only start up only when the key is inside the vehicle. And you can still run through your accessories or turn the vehicle on without starting as well. That'll be a different video we can go into that. Everything that you're going to see on the steering wheel is very strategically placed but very easy to be able to use from your voice activated commands to stereo and radio controls to the adaptive 
radar cruise control. All on the steering wheel, very easy to be able to access, very easy to be able to use. You can see that you have a very large display in the front. So everything from your RPMs, engine temperature, fuel gauge and speedometer, the biggest ones that you're gonna wanna be looking at. Also to give you a range as far as how far you can be able to drive, outside temperature, then how many miles are on the car. Now the one big thing that this Ultimate has that you see on a lot of $100,000 cars is gonna be now your heads up display. So everything from your speed to your safety features, which is the blind spot monitoring. Not only will it come up on the mirrors letting you know if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, but also up on your heads up display too. Lane keeping and intervention, and also turn by turn directions from the navigation can be displayed up there. Starting at the top, you do have a venting, but also sliding power glass sunroof. Very snappy and quick operations. So on a hotter summer day, if you just want to be able to vent the sunroof to be able to let some air out, you have the ability to be able to do that. And then just close it up, a manual sunshade. Typical sunglass holders for your Ray-Bans or Maui Gems, auto dimming rear view mirror. This model does have the home link control so you can be able to program a garage door clicker, gate clickers to a neighborhood or condominium, or even lights for your house. So if you're driving up to your home and you want to be able to walk into a fully illuminated home, you can be able to program those switches when you're coming home, open up your garage and turn on interior lights. Now this vehicle is also equipped with the home link or the blue link as well from Hyundai, which there's a three year subscription that comes with every one of our vehicles. And we'll be going over all the features of that here shortly. Coming down, you have a much larger display and screen than previous models. Everything from your onboard computer menus, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are gonna be standard in this car, to maintenance reminders, even for your navigation, which once the SD card is inserted, you can be able to use but most of everybody likes to be able to plug in their phones to be able to listen to music and you can be able to use all your apps such as your maps, Google Maps, uh, the Apple Maps and be able to stream those straight to the device. Coming down here you do have your air conditioning controls. Very simple and easy to use. I love knobs, I love the bigger knobs so you have fan speed, temperature, be able to go ahead and turn on and off your AC but also automatic. The auto part is gonna be great because once you select that, not only will it take over fan speed, but also direction of where it's gonna be going. So all you have to do is pretty much set it and forget it. Down here you have your defrosters, you know, for uh, front and rear and then recirculating air. Getting down over here, below that, you have your first USB power outlet. So you can be able to charge up tablets, smartphones, another USB outlet. So if you wanna be able to plug in another phone to be able to stream your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, a traditional power outlet, but this one is also equipped with the wireless charging. So simply by placing your smartphone down here, you can be able to wirelessly charge your phone and also wirelessly stream information to the car, such as music. Now this transmission is different than a lot of other transmissions out there. This is what they call their EcoShift 7-speed dual clutch transmission. It's great because it's gonna act almost like a manual transmission, but without a clutch. So it's gonna be able to give you great fuel mileage and great driving experience, very soft shifts. But let's say you wanna have a little bit more of a sporty feel, it's gonna act more like a manual transmission where the transmission shifts are gonna be sharper and closer together. And that's really technology you'd find in something like an Audi or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Now you can be able to control how the transmission reacts by selecting your drive modes. You have your normal drive mode and then your sport drive mode, which is gonna sharpen up your steering wheel. It's also gonna sharpen up throttle response and then also transmission shifts. Now, getting down here, you do have three-way heated front driver and passenger seats, which, by the way, may be able to talk about, are leather, but also ventilated. Now, they're not cooled, but having ventilated leather in South Texas is so important because it's also able to be able to wick away hotter air so you're not sitting on a flat leather surface. Now, another key point I want to be able to talk about is going to be the stereo. The Infinity sound system in this Kona is phenomenal. This isn't some off-the-shelf universal speakers that they put into the car. It has its own separate amplifier, but it's also tuned acoustically to this vehicle. So you're going to get the best sound quality and really recreate what the person who wrote the song, what it's going to sound like. So great sound quality, seamlessly integrated into the car, something you really have to be experienced to enjoy. All right, guys, now let's take a look at the back seat of the Kona. And one thing you're gonna be able to notice is that you're not sacrificing rear space by going to a subcompact SUV. 
And even the tremendous features that you have up front, such as your leather appointed seats that are also perforated, also follow through to the rear. So all the occupants are surrounded in luxury. So if it's just you and three of your closest friends heading up to Austin to see a live band or just going out to the hill country, anybody riding in the back is going to be just as comfortable in the front. Still have more storage into the rear door panels with thermos holders, power windows obviously, and then a center console that comes down with two more cup holders. A person like myself who's 6'3", around 265 pounds, I can fit very comfortably back here and actually wouldn't mind sitting back here on a longer road trip. So you're still getting the space and the size and the utility of a larger luxury SUV without having that huge price tag that goes along with it. So this car is a tremendous value the way it sits. Luxury, utility, and sportiness pretty much all wrapped into one, which is why it's one of the best sellers out on the market right now. So guys, as you can be able to see that the Hyundai Kona not only has space, utility, a very sporty feel to it, and tons of luxury amenities, without having the huge price tag that goes along with it, making it such a tremendous value. But as promised, like I said earlier in the video, now let's talk about the 2021 Hyundai Tucson. In keeping with the Joneses, just like the Kona, we got the ultimate, the bad boy. And the very first thing you're gonna notice when you take a look at the front of this car is the styling. Now, the Tucson's kept its body style for quite a long time, but for the 2021, they did revamp it. Think about getting Botox and a facelift. You still have that same characteristic honeycomb style grille, but with the glossy black finish and also these chrome bars that run, run along the length from side to side, really dressing up the appearance of it. Just like with every other Hyundai SUV, you still have your split level headlights and turn signals that go along with it as well, really adding to the muscular strong look, but also that very sharp appearance, especially while they're on. Coming over here to the front wheel, just like with all of our other high-end Hyundai SUVs, you have a honeycomb style wheel, alloy wheel, with a machine finished, and then a darker inlay. Now that inlay, being a darker color, is really be designed to be able to match with the fenders and the two-tone finish that you see that runs the length of the vehicle. Now this does also have the Michelin Pilot tires, giving you a very smooth, very comfortable, quiet ride, but being all season and all weather, it can tackle everything from snow, sand, without jeopardizing traction or ride quality as well. Coming over here to the side, you can see that you do have your chrome door handles and integrated turn signals into your mirrors. Now, why is that important? It's all about visibility. So having turn signals on the front and the rear are great, but let's say that you're running parallel with somebody down I-35. You're in the fast lane, they're in the slow lane, and you wanna merge into the middle. By turning on the turn signals and being seen, everybody knows your intentions, and being seen is what's gonna help prevent an accident. Now these are also breakaway mirrors too. So if somebody's going down through HEB and gets a little bit too close and knocks that mirror, it's gonna fold in, minimizing any damage that would occur as well. Now this vehicle does have the 360 view camera system. So you have a camera in the front grille, in the rear, but also located underneath each one of the mirrors. So saving cost on any damages there is gonna be a big help for you as well. Looking at the top of the vehicle, you can be able to see that you do have a two-tone top. So from the pearl white to the black, but then also glossy black roof rails. Adds a very sharp look to the Tucson, but they are actually functional. If you were to get the cross rails, you'd be able to put anything from extra storage, kayak racks, bike racks, just about anything. There's multiple different options you can be able to do with those. So it still has a lot of utility being in the midsize SUV crossover market. Coming to the rear, you can see that all the same body lines and designs still follow through to the back with a little bit of an updated version as well. Just like the front, you still have your chrome Hyundai badging, Hyundai Tucson badging as well. Your two-tone flat black and satin finish on the bottom of the bumper. And then this Ultimate also has a power liftgate. Now that liftgate can be controlled from three different spots. One is gonna be inside by the driver. One by just pressing the release while the vehicle's unlocked or the key is next to you. But then also off of the intelligent key, the smart key that comes with the Ultimate. Now, there's a couple safety features that come along with this. If this is closing and detects any pressure, let's just say from something sticking out or someone's hand is in the way, a couple pounds of pressure against it will then release it and it'll go ahead and change directions. Now it works both ways too. So if you're too close uh, to another vehicle or a wall and it's opening up, it feels pressure, it'll automatically come back down and close as well. So we call the finger keeper safety feature. Getting to the back, tremendous amount of storage space. 
After popping the tailgate, you can see the tremendous amount of space that you have back here. You know, surprising for a vehicle this size. So everything from just getting your typical groceries, doing that once a month run to HEB, you're going on a longer road trip out to Napa Valley, out to Fredericksburg, be able to get some fresh wine, or just a family vacation down to the lake for the weekend. Tons of space to be able to haul anything from suitcases, luggages, you know, tents, or just your run of the mill, you know, items. Even dogs, four-legged friends, I'm pretty sure you could be able to get about three or four of them back here and not have a problem with them fighting over space. Now, as you can take a look on the back of these seats too, you see those bars would say top tether. Those are going to be strategically located for the child safety seats rear facing. So not only does this go along with the front anchor to the seat, but also the rear tether for rearward facing seats. So wherever you'd want to be able to have that, you could be able to lock those child safety seats into it as well. A huge safety feature to be able to have since this is more of a family oriented SUV. Now let's say that you want to haul around a little bit more, a bit of a, of a weekend warrior, you want to be able to do some you know, gardening around the house or maybe build that deck. To be able to fold down the second row seats, there's a lever located on both sides right here. And by simply lifting this up, you can be able to fold down one side or both to be able to maximize your cargo space. Now this is a 60-40 split folding seat, meaning if you just need a little bit of room but you still need to carry around four passengers or three passengers, you can fold down one side or the other, maximizing the cargo space but still having space for other passengers inside the car. Now you can also notice too that it is a nearly flat surface all the way up to the front, something that you'd see in a mid-size or full-size pickup truck without having to have a big pickup truck. So still maintaining that SUV, that utility feel that you'd expect to get. So just like with all of our other Hyundai SUVs and the higher trim levels in the Kona that we just talked about, you have your Hyundai Intelligent Key. Same operations, which is your lock, unlock, panic button, but the only thing that's going to differ with this is for the power lift gate. Your third button on the bottom. So press and hold for three seconds, be able to open and or close the lift gate. And remember we talked about there's three different ways to be able to do that. From the rear, or the key, or inside the vehicle. Now when you open up, the front driver door, the first thing you'll notice, again, is the amount of storage space that you have down there on the bottom. Be able to hold things such as tablets, larger drinks, and be able to see that you have your Infinity logo for the Infinity sound system. And just like with all of our other Hondas that have the Infinity sound system, it was acoustically matched to this vehicle. So you're going to be able to get the best sound quality with premium sound deadening materials to be able to help keep out distortion and get the best auto clarity that you possibly get. Power windows, door locks, mirror locks and mirror controls are all located in the same position with the one touch driver auto down and up feature as well. Now that auto feature does have the same pressure sensing technology that the rear lift gate does. So if someone's fingers or hands get caught in here by accident, it'll automatically roll itself back down, preventing any injury. The driver's seat is gonna be an eight way power driver with two way lumbar support. Once again, being able to give you the most comfortable seating position that you can get and also leather seats which are going to be heated and actively cooled as well. All your safety instrumentation is going to be located right up there next to the front driver knee. So from your blind spot warning, lane departure warning, traction control, and on the very right you'll be able to see that is your control to be able to open or close your power lift gate from inside the vehicle. Now that we're back into the driver's seat of this vehicle, and let me tell you, very similar things that you'd see throughout different lineups in the Hyundai brand, but just with such a nice elegant touch with everything that's been done with it, from the materials, to the stitching onto the dash, to the layout of the controls. And just like with the Hyundai Kona, same deal, push button start ignition. As long as the key's inside the vehicle, be able to go ahead and start it or run through your accessories. And getting up here to the steering wheel, nice thick leather wrapped steering wheel giving you a good hand feel, something very indicative that you would find in higher end luxury cars. Soft touch, easy to be able to grip, Everything from your windshield wipers to headlights are going to be within fingertips reach. And then all your cruise control, which is the radar cruise control, all your onboard computer information, voice activated commands, Bluetooth and stereo are all going to be located here. So all the things that you're going to want to go to the most while driving the car is located on the steering wheel to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Just like with all the other Hondas that we have lined up so far, same very easy to read gauges. So your RPM, speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, outside temperature, fuel range, and then of course, which gear you're in. Starting up here from the top, 
you'll see instead of having a traditional sunroof, this one has the panoramic roof, which stretches all the way to the rear passenger. So that is a power sunshade, and you'll see that it moves very quickly compared to some of the other vehicles out on the market. So not only the front, but rear passengers have a beautiful view out, but then there's also power. So one touch, automatic, you'll see how far that actually slides out. So much larger than a traditional panoramic roof, not only in the length, but also how much it opens up. Same operations, just one touch. You'll slide that back, be able to close it, but also see too that your sunshade is coming as well. So you don't have to worry about doing two different operations to be able to close that up if it's a hot summer day or if it starts raining or anything like that. Sunglass holders, map lights, very traditional. Auto dimming rear view mirror with the same home link controls and also your blue link and SOS controls are located up here. And we'll be touching on those items here shortly. Same radio display and layout, very easy to be able to use. You have your navigation, but also all your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay menus through here. And you can see it's on a split to screen display, so you can be able to go ahead and have more than one thing at a time. So whether it's gonna be a clock, your navigation, then also radio as well. So giving you multiple items to be able to look at instead of one item dominating the whole screen. I love knobs, so easy to be able to use. So for your power and volume, and then be able to scroll through settings or just be able to tune through radio stations. I love this stitching, which runs through the front of the dash, really giving it that elegant upscale look. Something instead of just having a plastic or a vinyl, really enhances the luxury feel and look inside this Tucson. Coming down here, you do also have automatic dual climate control. So unlike the Kona where it's just a single one, driver and passenger can be able to adjust their temperatures. So when it's in normal mode, you can see whatever the driver set at, the passenger will be set at as well. Let's say the passenger wants a little bit warmer by simply twisting this knob. The farthest two right AC vents will then blow what is coming out at that temperature, while these two will come out for the driver. Now having an automatic mode will then determine the fan speed, but also where the air needs to be going to maintain that temperature inside the cabin, making sure everyone's comfortable. And everything from your fan speeds to where you want it going and turning on and off the AC controls are located right underneath. Rear defrosters, recirculating, and then also now your heated seats and cooled seats controls located down here. So just like on the Kona, you have three-way heated seats, but also three-way cooled seats, which are going to be actively cooled, pushing air in through the perforated leather. And then on those really chilly days, a heated steering wheel as well. You do have wireless charging for your smartphones located right down underneath. Not one USB outlet, an auxiliary plug-in, and of course this is going to be for your wireless charging, just letting you know that it's working as well. So tons of places to be able to plug electronics in. A nice storage compartment with two cup holders, and then your automatic transmission. Now this does have a manual shift mode, so by simply shifting from park into drive, it's going to take over all the operations. By shifting it to the left, and pushing forward, you can be able to actively up select the gear or pulling it back to down select. That's good if you're on steep grades or if you're towing anything behind you, you can be able to have more control over the transmission, making sure you can maximize the amount of power that you're getting out of the Tucson. Drive modes, so from comfort to sport. What sport's gonna do, it's gonna sharpen up the steering wheel, sharpen up the throttle response, but also transmission shifts. It's gonna stay in gear a little bit longer so you get a little bit more power throughout the power band. You can be able to change the controls of your camera views, which we'll go over here shortly, but then also an electronic parking brake. The auto hold works same way with the, within conjunction of the parking brake. So if you come to a stop and you let your foot off, whether you're up on a hill or at a stoplight, the vehicle's not gonna roll back. And as soon as you hit the gas, the parking brake releases and you can be able to move forward. A really nice convenience feature to have. Now let's talk about, talk about that rear view camera. So you have four cameras that work in conjunction with the backup system. So you have one located in the front grille, one on the tailgate, and then one under each of the side mirrors. So when you put the vehicle into reverse, you first get a composite of what is directly behind you, but then also a 360 degree view of what's around you. And this is so seamless that you can actually be able to tell that there are no lines or differentiating segments of it. So it's one fluid, very sharp image to be able to get. Now, that's one of the settings you have. You can also set it to where it gives you your wide angle directly behind you. So if you need a little bit more clarity, be able to use that. 
then also you can see that those lines are going to move when the steering wheel moves, so it's going to give you a prediction of where your vehicle is going. So if you're backing into a parking spot that's kind of tight, you can be able to see where the edges of the car are going to be able to meet. Yellow means you're getting close, red means any closer, you might want to pull out your insurance information and swap it with the person you're about to bump into, right? That's going to be another one. You have your composite of what's behind you and then also the back driver wheel. So if you're going in parallel parking next somewhere, you can be able to check to be able to see how close you're actually getting to the curb. And then also for the passenger side as well. Nice features that you'll be able to get without having to readjust your mirrors. Now, to be able to disengage that, just simply either put it into drive. And now you have a front facing view along with your 360. One directly in front of you showing you exactly what's there. The front side so you can be able to see the front driver tire. So once again, if you're pulling into a tight spot, you don't want to curb a rim. Or in most traditional parallel parking, your passenger side tire, making sure that you're not getting too close and doing any damage there. And you can be able to adjust these views either from the dash or with the camera button down on the bottom by turning that off. Now let's talk about the back seat and how much space there really is back here. Once again, being on the larger side, tremendous amount of room. Just like with the front seats, you still have your leather seats that are also perforated in the rear and two stage heated seats for the outboard. Infinity sound system, along with these air conditioning vents too, which tie into whatever the front driver has their air conditioning set at, maximize the amount of airflow and comfort for the rear passengers. You do also have an additional USB outlet for charging anything such as iPads for the kids or someone's cell phone. Center armrest with two more cup holders, but the biggest thing that makes the seat so comfortable is that they're reclinable. So that same lever that we use to be able to fold the seats flat, just simply lift that up and you get about four inches of travel. So you'd be able to stretch out your feet, lay back and just enjoy the ride. So whether you're coming back from Fredericksburg on a wine tour or just cruising around town, it's just as comfortable, if not more in the back seat than what you'd see in the front seat of this vehicle. This would be the spot I'd wanna be in if I was riding in this car. As you can see guys, we have a SUV that'll fit just about any lifestyle. If you're looking for something with a little bit of extra space or some room for your four-legged friends and want to go on some adventures, the Kona's got you covered. If you're a little bit more family oriented and want a little bit of the finer luxury amenities and safety features, the Tucson's got you covered as well. The great part is with the Hyundai lineup, we have a vehicle that'll fit any lifestyle. Thank you for tuning in to Roadside Reviews Episode 3. Make sure that you leave a comment if there's any other vehicles that you'd like to be able to see and hit that subscribe button and thumbs up. It really helps us out. Next week, we'll be going over the all new 2021 Nissan Rogue Platinum Edition. Once again, my name is John Siebers and until next time, see you then.